All right, thank you for tuning in to this unit training on heart disease and stroke, life-saving learning for women. I'll be running through the slides with you for about the next half hour to familiarize you with the content for when you're out there in your communities giving this presentation, and then also to make you aware of some areas where we potentially think there could be questions or clarification needed from your audience. So this title slide here, Really our goal with the tagline is to point out that with cardiovascular diseases like heart disease and stroke, there often are not any warning signs or there are very subtle warning signs. And so understanding more about the causes, focusing on prevention really can make a difference in protecting yourself, the women in your life, maybe even saving their life. So. With the introduction slide, you would obviously introduce yourself. Um, you also could do a reminder to make sure that everyone who's at your session has signed in to the sign-in sheet so that we have a record of that information as well. Not a lot of explanation needed for this slide or the following slide, but we include these with every grapevine unit, every presentation to help explain who the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation is as the creator of these presentations, as the administrator of Grapevine, um, so that your participants would get more information about what the WWHF does and how to learn more about their programs. Same thing for the Wisconsin Well Woman Program, which is a, a separate entity from the WWHF, a separate organization, but they do partner with Grapevine, they help provide funding, and so it's important for us to recognize them, to thank them, and then also to direct women to their services because they provide a lot of really awesome free preventive health screenings for women who are underinsured or uninsured as well. And so the link on the screen will take your participants to more information on the Wisconsin Well Woman Program. We start out about talking generically about cardiovascular disease and how it is affecting women in the United States, really just pointing out that this is a huge impact for women's health and that it is an issue that we want to talk about and provide tips and lifestyle changes for so that hopefully you or the other women in your life don't have to be the ones affected by it. And we include a real life example as well to really drive home the point of how this information that we're going to be talking about today really can be life changing or even life saving. And so this actually is a previous Grapevine session attendee and you'll read in, in your scripting notes exactly her details, but basically she attended a session back when to learn about health information and following that she started experiencing symptoms of a heart attack that she had just learned about, was able to recognize that she was having a heart attack and took the appropriate action to save her life. And so we want the other women in our communities to also learn information that can have an impact on their life, a positive impact on their health. And so the learning goals for the content of this heart disease and stroke unit is to understand the two major cardiovascular concerns for women, which are heart disease and stroke, to understand risk factors, to um, understand the different healthy habits that you can take to help protect yourself and then also to learn what different resources and community programs are available to help provide that additional support when they leave the presentation to help them be successful with the lifestyle changes that hopefully they're going to be motivated to take. Because cardiovascular is a big word and we want everyone, regardless of their literacy levels, to understand what that means, this slide goes through some explanation and how basically cardiovascular is just a big word that means anything involving your heart and blood vessels. And so there are examples of the many varieties of cardiovascular diseases, but um, for the purpose of this presentation, we are specifically focusing on heart disease and stroke, which again are those um, conditions that are most impacting women. So starting then with those two major cardiovascular concerns and a little more about each one. 
We start by talking about heart disease, and heart disease is another one of those umbrella terms that refers to anything that affects your heart specifically. And there are a lot of different examples, a lot of different conditions. There's coronary artery disease, arrhythmias, cardiomyopathy, heart failure, the list goes on. And if because each one is a little different, if women are interested in learning specifically about a certain one, we would encourage them to visit the American Heart Association, their website, which is heart.org. For the purposes of this grapevine unit, we're focusing on kind of heart disease overall, how it impacts women, and then what you can do with your lifestyle changes to have the most impact on preventing heart disease. Adding on to the last slide, sometimes cardiovascular disease and heart disease are used interchangeably, those terms, but technically cardiovascular disease is the larger umbrella that encompasses all of the different types of diseases like heart disease, like stroke. So if you would get that question or need some clarification, uh, that's kind of the explanation to that. On this slide, in talking specifically about heart disease, we run through a little bit of an anatomy lesson because sometimes people are interested in, in learning about how the heart functions, but we wanted to keep it really simple. So really just explaining here that there are main arteries that supply your heart with blood, and in a healthy person, what we wanna see is we wanna see these arteries open and flexible and elastic to make sure that your heart is able to get all of the blood that it needs to be able to transport the blood that your body needs freely. But in a person who might have heart disease, specifically coronary artery disease. These arteries can be damaged and more narrow and stiff, and that makes it hard for your blood to get, for your heart to get the blood that it needs. And when your heart can't get the blood and the oxygen and the nutrients it needs, it starts to die. Um, and we offer the opportunity for some participation at the end of the slide as well. You could ask your participants if anyone knows kind of what the more common name is for when that happens, for when your heart muscle starts to die. And if anyone feels comfortable answering, they may do so at this time. Because what we're talking about is a heart attack. A heart attack is what happens when there's that death of the heart muscle, the heart tissue, caused by a lack, lack of blood supply. And we talk about heart attacks because they're real dangers, real consequences when it comes to undetected or undetreated heart disease. While we hope to be able to prevent heart attacks from happening with the information, the education that we're giving in this unit, um, we know that they're not all preventable. And so we want women to recognize the signs of a heart attack so that they ultimately know what to do in that case. So on this slide, you have some general information about heart attack symptoms and how they differ in men versus women. So maybe when they typically think of a heart attack symptom as a really sudden, severe pain where you're going to be clutching your chest, you know, and kind of fall to the ground like is portrayed in a lot of media, that might not always be the case. And the symptoms might actually be very subtle, which tends to especially be true in women. And some of those more subtle symptoms, warning signs, are explained and discussed on this slide. Um, if anyone would be experiencing any of those symptoms, they would of course call 911 immediately. And then we offer them some do's and don'ts in the situation of having a possible heart attack. Of course, we want them to call 911 at the first sign, but we also want to talk about some of the other actions that they might consider. For instance, taking aspirin, should I or should I not? We've included it here in the do section, but with parentheses, because really the very first thing we want them to do is to call 911 and not to spend time digging around in their cabinets for aspirin or, um, trying to find a glass of water, or even taking aspirin might be contraindicated for them in their health condition. So 
calling 911 first, and then when it comes to aspirin, the first responders or, or the medical providers at the hospital would kind of take care of that or instruct you to do it if you needed to. And then we also want to talk about some of the don'ts and, and not being embarrassed by a situation a potential medical emergency you know it happens and even if you think it's just the flu or acid reflux or maybe it's your menstrual cycle or menopause symptoms it's something to be taken seriously you don't know if you're having a heart attack or not unless you get it checked out for sure so again calling 911 not driving yourself to the hospital or having someone else take you but getting that treatment as soon as possible and then in your partner note on this slide, if you get questions about some of those medical treatments for heart attacks, what they might be, there's information on that so that you feel comfortable answering. Again, we're focusing a lot on prevention with this unit, but it's possible that people might want to know what they can anticipate if they would be in an ambulance going to the hospital. So you have some of that information in your scripting as well. And we also have information about hands-only CPR. This is another area where time really matters and knowing CPR, having your loved ones knowing CPR, your community can increase a person's survival rate if they are under cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest and a heart attack are two separate things. It's, it's an electrical problem versus a blood flow issue, but it's again life-saving information potentially so we want the community to be aware of that and how to do it and there is a really nice video that explains that in your scripting you'll also find a link to a English Spanish version so if you are working with Spanish speaking populations there's a video that you'd be able to use with them as well Moving on then to the second cardiovascular concern that we want to talk about, stroke. With having some of the background of heart disease that you just talked about, it would make sense to describe a stroke as a brain attack. So heart attack is when your heart is not getting the blood it needs. A stroke is when your brain is not getting the blood that it needs and it can parts of it can start to die as well. And then you have some numbers here again about the impact of that on women specifically. There are different causes of stroke. We don't go into this very deeply but offer a broad explanation just so that if these terms are thrown out in a hospital or, or with family the, the women are knowing what's being referred to. So an ischemic stroke is when there's a blood clot that's blocking blood flow. A hemorrhagic stroke is when there's a rupture or a blood leak. And then you also have TIAs, which people might hear about, and those are mini strokes, which initially can cause stroke-like symptoms. Um, you might not be able to decipher the difference while it's actually happening. Uh, so still a medical emergency needs medical attention to be uh, ruled out as a major stroke versus a TIA, but someone who does have one of these mini strokes will be more likely to have a major stroke in the future. As with a heart attack, a stroke is a medical emergency and we want women to be able to recognize the signs and symptoms. So you have the acronym here, Be Fast. Sometimes it's just fast, but it explains the different signs and symptoms. And then, of course, if women are experiencing any of these, they would dial 911 immediately to get treatment as soon as possible because time really does matter, especially when it comes to stroke. And again, in your partner notes, you'll have some more information on potential treatments for a stroke, as well as there's a handout in your partner resources. That's kind of nifty. It has, you can um, type in where you're located in the state of Wisconsin, and it'll tell you what types of stroke centers are available to you, the difference between them, and how long it might take to get to one of those. So if you have participants who are interested in that kind of information, you would have those resources to offer to them. Okay, so after covering the two major cardiovascular concerns, we now move into the risk factors.
In talking about risk factors for heart disease and stroke, we start off the section with a brief explanation to the process of atherosclerosis. And we felt that this was important information to, for women to know because coronary artery disease is the number one type of heart disease. Um, and also because strokes can be caused by blockages, we wanted women to understand this process of plaque building up in your arteries and narrowing them and making blood more difficult to flow through. So you have a very easy general explanation of what that is here on this slide. Atherosclerosis can be contributed to by the different risk factors that you see on this slide, but these are also independent risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So being overweight, having high blood pressure, high cholesterol, having diabetes, being inactive, having a poor diet, smoking, stress, all of these things can increase your risk for developing heart disease or stroke. And if people are interested in learning more about the specific mechanisms behind these, there is information in your scripting notes. Otherwise, we wanted to be just create an awareness with this and keep it kind of generic. There are numbers associated with most of the risks, and so that's what we're more focused on with this risk factor section, so that women can understand how to get these numbers measured, what they are, um, and to really have that concrete information with them to help them understand their overall risk. BMI is one of those numbers that helps us understand our, our weight status if we fall into that overweight or obese category. And I, I don't think most people have questions about BMI, how it works, but you do have information here on the guidelines where the categories are, are defined and then also how you would be able to measure a BMI. And same thing with waist circumference information on how it helps us to determine our, our status, our risk factors, what the goals are for both women and men, and then how to measure your waist circumference. So if you have time, the incentive for this unit is a heart-shaped tape measure. So you could take the opportunity to lead an exercise in measuring waist circumferences with your participants. We find that this presentation and the content does take about the full hour. So I personally would recommend that you wait until the end to do this. But regardless of, of what you choose with your group, they will have the information they need on how to take a waist circumference and then the tools to do so with that tape measure. Blood pressure as a risk factor is probably the area that would have the most discussion, especially with the guidelines being changed recently at the end of 2017. So that's something that this slide talks through in that it's important to be aware of these new numbers because even if your personal measurements have not changed at all because the categories have changed with the, the recent guidelines, that you may be in a different category now all of a sudden and may be in an area of high blood pressure where before you um, were just that elevated. So some explanation to that, answering people's questions with that, and um, we'd encourage you to on this slide to identify some of the areas in your communities where women can go and get their blood pressure checked. So free clinics or um, other community sites so that they are able to keep a regular check on their blood pressure. Um, in your resources as the presenters, we also have information on taking accurate blood pressures and information on some blood pressure cuff options as well, validated devices, so that if you have people who are self-monitoring their blood pressure, or if you need uh, recommendations for the cuffs that you're using in your clinic or in your setting, you can get some reliable information on that too. Cholesterol norm numbers, the big point here is that the normal ranges are not as important as your overall cardiovascular risk and how that those pieces are all fitting together. So cholesterol really encourages and, and um, necessitates a conversation with your healthcare provider, but we do have some of the 
normal quote unquote ranges for you listed in your scripting so that you have those as references. But really we want to encourage people to be following with a healthcare provider regularly if they're able and then to have conversations about their overall heart risks. Then finally, blood sugar, we talk about in relationship to diabetes and how that impacts cardiovascular health. So you have information on that slide, on this slide here about that relationship. And then as with all the other numbers, a slide about the, the normal ranges, what the numbers mean, and then how often you should have these numbers checked. Knowing these numbers and knowing all that information that was just talked about is one of the best ways for individuals to understand and to know their risk for cardiovascular diseases. Because again, a lot of the symptoms are silent or very subtle or non-existent. And so knowing your risks, knowing your numbers is understanding the potential impact on your health. So we've included a few more tools on this slide for women to really be able to understand their risk. First of all, just taking a, a moment to reflect on what they've learned and see which numbers they know of already that they could fill in or to identify which numbers they need to find out or, or certain risk factors that they need to find out. And then there's also a calculator by the American Heart Association that we've included a link for that women can go there to get a little more specific and to dive a little deeper with their risk as well. Um, and then for you as the partners, we've included in your scripting notes some additional calculators that are available for clinicians to use with their clients, with their patients that can help them get a better estimation or a better understanding of their overall cardiovascular picture as well. So then finally, before wrapping up with some of the support that's available, we wanted to talk about establishing healthy habits. So we understand the risk, we understand how women are being impacted by heart disease and stroke, but we wanna know what we can do about it. And the great news is that over 80% of cardiovascular diseases can be prevented by addressing the controllable risk factors that we, we were just discussing. So things like being physically active, eating well, and managing stress, which is going to be talked about in the coming slides. With physical activity, I don't think it's any surprise that it has such great benefits. So you'll, but you'll talk about those a little bit here, specifically how they impact cardiovascular disease, the recommendations for how much to get, and then on the next slide, you'll have information on how to do that. So you'll kind of see that theme as we go through the lifestyle changes section is you'll get the what to do and then a slide on how to do it. So this slide covers some of the small things that you can do that can add up to a big impact and how you can incorporate physical activity into your lifestyle and maybe even enjoy it. Same thing with diet. So you have a slide here about the, the diets and the eating patterns that can be really helpful for preventing cardiovascular disease, for improving your overall cardiovascular health. The DASH diet is one that could be a little bit more reactive for someone who already has high blood pressure, has a high risk of high blood pressure. They might be encouraged to follow a DASH diet. Um, but then the Mediterranean diet is one that anybody can follow. That is a great guide for getting your heart healthy fats, for cutting back on some of the things that aren't so heart healthy, more plant-based. And so there are, for your participants, there will be handouts available that go more into depth on all of these, or for both of these, the DASH diet and the Mediterranean diet, and kind of how to carry those out. But they also can follow tools like the American Heart Association's Heart Check, which is on food labels to indicate that this is a, a heart healthy food. 
So your participants will have those handouts, but then we also talk specifically here about sodium and how to implement that change into your lifestyle because sodium is, is usually something that most people are way overdoing. Um, in fact, the recommendation is no more than 2,300 milligrams per day, and most people are getting well over 3,000. And so you have some practical tips here for how people can cut back on that sodium intake in their daily food consumption and drink consumption. And we also mentioned alcohol and caffeine intake because when it comes specifically to heart health, there's a lot of information about there about wine and being heart healthy or not being heart healthy. Um, and caffeine can be something that people associate with their heart health as well. And so we wanted to address that with this slide. Essentially, it boils down to everything in moderation um, and you'll have more details with that in your scripting. In addition to physical activity and diet, stress is another of those big areas to talk about with lifestyle changes. Uh, all of that inflammation and those the inflammatory process that's going on with stress can really wreak havoc on your cardiovascular health, your blood vessels. And so there are some practical tips that are offered on this slide as well on how you can practice um, better stress management and stress reduction. And finally, when it comes to lifestyle changes and preventive actions, we want to address aspirin because that's another question that we anticipate you getting from your communities. Um, when it comes to aspirin for the primary prevention of cardiovascular problems, this is something that is usually reserved for, for individuals who might have a really high risk of heart disease or stroke. Um, in general, aspirin would be, would be more for the secondary prevention of an additional heart attack or an additional stroke event in someone who's already had it. So um, when it comes to aspirin, the benefits of taking it daily have to outweigh any potential risks, like bleeding risks specifically. So typically, as I mentioned before, this would be reserved for people who are at a very high risk. And of course, always checking in with a healthcare provider to know if the potential benefits could outweigh the, outweigh the risks. And we have a resource there for you from the 2019 ACC AHA guidelines on the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. So you can learn more about that as well if you're interested in, in diving more into the topic of aspirin and cardiovascular disease. And that is all of the learning content. As a wrap up, you would remind participants that prevention is so important, again, because these diseases can happen and progress without you knowing about it because of subtle symptoms or no symptoms. And so taking prevention really is an important step that starts with you about knowing your risk factors, about taking action towards healthier habits. And then because you can't prevent every single case, we hope to be able to prevent the majority of heart disease incidents and stroke. But unfortunately, sometimes those medical emergencies are gonna happen. So um, in addition to protecting yourself from these, knowing what to do in the event of a heart attack or a stroke can be absolutely life-saving as well. And then we want to send everybody home with the appropriate tools and support that they need to put all of these actions into place. And so we've included the SMART goal setting here. If you have done other grapevine units, you're probably pretty familiar with this, but we describe what a SMART goal is, why it's important. And then if there's time, you could practice some SMART goal setting together with your participants. Otherwise, they have an example here and they also will have the handout with their resources to be able to do so. 
And then there's a list of other really great community resources here for additional learning, for additional support, for other questions maybe being answered that need to be um, lots of great recipes and free programs that can be found on these websites. Specifically, if you are presenting in the city of Milwaukee or in St. Croix County, the Wisconsin Wise Woman Program is a preventive health service that can help women with their assessment of heart disease and diabetes and stroke and additional support for that. So keep that in mind if you're presenting to those particular areas of the state. Otherwise, any of these resources can provide some really great information. And then that brings you to the end of the presentation. So this would be your opportunity to hand out the post-session survey to get those completed. Those are hugely important to the Grapevine program for us to be able to report back to funders, to let them know what we're doing in the communities, to get feedback from participants on what we could do better, what they, what the kind of information they're seeking and that they need. And then the incentive again is those those heart-shaped tape measures. So um, answer any questions here. And if you have questions about this unit, about the content, about the curriculum, please reach out to us as well. We are happy to support you in any way that we can with um, getting this information out into the community and helping you feel comfortable with it. So thanks for watching and we look forward to partnering and working with you as you are sharing women's health information in your communities.